is a Dajjal, and um, belief in him is obligatory. Um, and it comes from Dajjal, and Dajjal means to lie, to you know, confuse, to turn things up down, upside down. Some of our scholars say that uh, what the Dajjal does is he uh, overturns the, the very principles of knowledge so that you, you no longer know that what is true is true and what is false is false. And this is the age we live in because we don't have, even like if we look at Descartes, I think therefore I am. Okay, well that changes the whole history of human thought because in traditional medieval thought, existence comes first. Right. And in, would, our, yeah. in our tradition also, existence comes first. Yeah. And then epistemology. Right. So now for him, epistemology comes first, okay. and then we don't really know if we exist or not. So we should say, I am, mm. therefore I should think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. or some people say, I am, therefore God exists. But, um, you know, uh, overturning the, what we call immutables. Immutables are first principles. Immutables also for us, are the basic principles of prophetic law, the dispensation, and the basic principles of um, theological truth, necessary being, possible existence, a change indicates temporality, and then the basic thawabit of uh, suluk, of the moral path of self-perfection. So these don't change, but the Dajjal makes them change. And then you have the immutables made mutable, and this gives you the disasters which are the ugly signs of the end of time. As the prophet said, you know, the slave girl will give birth to her mistress or her master. And um, you'll see barefoot, naked, uh, poor shepherds vying for each other, sometimes camel shepherds vying for, with each other in the building of tall buildings. So you see that, but then when we look at it, we say, many people, probably most, they say that, you know, the mother will give birth to a daughter who would treat her like a slave. And, uh, of course, we see that today. And, you know, and then you can see the buildings. You can go look at them yourself. One of the signs of the end of time is, إِذَا بُعِجَتْ مَكَّةْ إِذَا رَأَيْتَ مَكَّةْ بُعِجَتْ كَوَاظِمْ when you see Mecca gutted with tunnels and you see tall buildings over the tops of the mountain, then know that the hour has cast its shadow over you. Right. You can go and see the hour doing that right now, yeah. the big tower. But um, They call that Burj Asa. Too, they call it the, the tower yeah, of the that's, hour. That's frightening, isn't yeah. it? I went to Mecca the first time in 1973. There wasn't a single tunnel anywhere. Yeah. It's like where they come from. But... You see then what happens is why does the girl treat her mother as a slave or the boy treat his mother as a slave or as a slave that's mistreated because the thawabit are gone, that they don't have sound belief, they don't know first principles, um, they don't have the morality. Okay, so all that's, and then when that's done, then she will do whatever she wants to do. And the same thing, you look at the shepherds vying with each other in tall buildings, so it means certain thawabit have been overthrown. And among these are a sound political order, which should put people in power who are capable of leading and who lead us for our benefit and not their own. And then you have also overthrowing a sound economic system in which there is distribution of wealth. So you get all this wealth concentrated in the hands of shepherds. Many of those shepherds, as Sheikh Hamza knows, are very good people. You know, but they're not the cloth that you make leaders from in a time like this. They can't deal with that. So the Dajjal, this is what he does. He takes the thawabit, the immutables, and makes them mutable and changes them in a thousand different ways.